Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and you guys know I recently updated my server, my home server, to a HP DL360. Now, the server is great and all, but the only thing it lacks is a 3.5 inch hard drive slot. So, a lot of my storage that are on 3.5 inch can't be used because the server doesn't support it, which leads me to this. I reached out to a company called Team Win, and they're actually an eBay company that sells a lot of eBay products off like Banggoods and uh, they were able to provide me with this particular NAS that I needed which is the BU35WF. It's a Wi-Fi version of a NAS storage. Now the reason why I went for this brand is because of the chipset and I'll, I'll talk about more of that a little bit later. This device is on an aluminum body which is great and light. Now to slide this whole thing out is only one screw on the bottom and then the whole thing just comes apart. And then you need four screws to install the hard drive. Now I'm using a four terabyte Western Digital NAS drive for this for now. And it seems to keep everything cool even though it's enclosed inside. Now the only thing I had a problem with was when you're installing you just gotta be careful of that wire so it doesn't get caught on the screw when you're installing it. Other than that, it was an easy install. On the back you have the Wi-Fi, then the Ethernet, and then the USB and then the power switch and the power cable itself. Now it's a gigabit ethernet so it does provide enough speed to transfer all the files that you need. In the front you have the Wi-Fi signal and then the hard drive activity light. And the lights are not obnoxiously bright so you could still see it from a distance and it doesn't blind you when you're up close. As far as the user interface it's very very basic. You're not going to get much out of it and yeah I'll show you in a second. So at first login the password is keymax so you could always change that in the future. Here you have the system, you know, uh, dashboard itself, and you have the storage space and details about the storage. A uh, huge, huge problem that I have with this is that it doesn't have any way to format your hard drives. And as you can see, it needs to use ext4, which is a Linux partition. So it's not something you could just pop into Windows and have Windows format. You need a Linux computer to format that file type. That's the only pet peeve I have with this guy. Why wouldn't you install a formatting tool for it? As far as the system setting goes, uh, there's Wi-Fi settings that you could set up, and then there's also internet settings. Now this guy could actually be used as a router. Like you could plug your WAN into the ethernet port and then have it, you know, uh, route your Wi-Fi network traffic. Which, yeah, I guess um, people could use it that way. I'm not, but you could also set here your static IPs if you have it connected to a network. Uh, security settings, uh, you can change your password here. Your LAN settings over here is uh, don't touch this unless you are planning to use this as uh, you know, a router. So leave this as is. And then you have your system settings if you want to restore, reboot, and stuff like that. And uh, van settings, you have the FTP, DMZ. Like this is more of a router network thing. You don't really need to worry about it other than the FTP. One thing, I don't know why they call it this, but one thing about this, and it's, it's particular to this model, is that it does support BitTorrent. So I love the fact that you could do this. I could just go add, choose file, Ubuntu, or something like that. Hit upload, and then it'll just start downloading my torrents as it should. And it's great, uh, and if it's alongside with my Raspberry Pi VPN project, where you're the way the Raspberry Pi becomes the you know shares the VPN account over your network, this is basically protected. And I'll leave a video link up in the card up here and in the descriptions below for that if you're interested. Now, all in all, let's head back to why I decided to get this model. It's because it uses a MediaTek chipset, and you're able to install. Open WRT on this guy, which is great. Now you're gonna turn this guy into like a budget-friendly NAS server, like even the UI is, you know, very basic, to something that could handle a lot of stuff. Now, if you're familiar with DDWRT and all those all the router type firmwares, you're basically gonna get that with Open WRT. Now, I haven't had the chance to really do it yet. It is a simple process. Now, I mean, it's a matter of going to system settings and then system status, and you can upload the version, the firmware, but I haven't done it yet because I need to do a little bit more research. I don't know if it's gonna break something, if something's not gonna work. I, I wanna do all the research before I go ahead and do that, which will lead to another video because I definitely am gonna do this because with the software it has right now, it really cripples the hardware. So that's it for me, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions about this guy, hit up in the comments below. I did just start a new forum and I'll leave that in the description below. So come and check it out. I have, it's basically, a easier way to search for your answers through basically a search instead of having to run down all the comments. And I've seen that a lot uh, where somebody wrote down a solution for a problem and somebody asked the same 
problem like four times. So yeah, hoping ha having a forum will hopefully fix that issue. Now, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hacktail it hurts.